around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. This is Frank Knight speaking for the world's most honored watch, Longines. When the West was being won, Longines was there. Old records show sales of Longines watches in the silver mining towns of Colorado and Nevada, the gold mining areas of California. A fine gold watch, preferably a Longines, was one of the first luxuries purchased by a lucky prospector. For then, as now, the name Longines identified the world's most honored watch. Longines watches won their first World's Fair Grand Prize in 1878, won grand prizes in Paris, Brussels, Philadelphia, and at many other places. Right now, Longines watches are winning comparable successes in the accuracy competitions in European national observatories. Today, you needn't make a gold strike to own a Longines. Many beautiful models for ladies and gentlemen are priced as low as $75. Visit your authorized Longines Whitnor jeweler. He will be honored to serve you. There's a man running toward the house. Get back inside. Close the door. What is it? I don't know. Be quiet. Don't shut me out. Please. Please don't shut me out. Open the door. Let him in. Open the door. Can you let me hide? Will you let me hide? Don't, don't let him get me. You don't, hurt, mister. You hurt. No use trying to hide, Rourke. Don't shoot me. Please, don't shoot me. You shot a dying man. Yeah, he wasn't dying long. You shot him in the back. He was still dead. You're a right smart boy, ain't you? Where's your daddy? Ted. Let the boy talk. Where's your daddy, I said. He's dead. Hmm. You two living here all alone? We ain't scared. Of course you ain't. Yeah, too bad it had to happen right in your kitchen, ma'am. Rourke has had that coming a long time. What are, what are you going to do, mister? Well, just nothing, ma'am. Nothing at all, if you'll let me. What do you mean? You just remember this was my affair, mine and Rourke's. And now I'll walk right on out of here. Forget about it. As long as you two forget about it. Marshal's going to come after you, sure not, Ted. Yeah, like I said, he's a real smart boy, ain't he, ma'am? I guess you're right, though. I guess he does talk a mite too much. Um, no, no, he don't talk. He don't. No. No. I'm mighty glad to hear that. Because it'd be a shame for a bright boy like that to get his throat cut because he didn't know when to keep his mouth shut, now, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? He won't talk. I promise. Oh, that's good. Real good. And yeah, both of you just stand quiet till I get away from here. Won't be no trouble. What? What about him? Well, I plumb forgot my manners. Well, I guess I better get him out of here. <laughs> Uh, 
<laughs> Matt! Oh, Matt! Anybody here? Oh, for heaven, Chester! I'm out back here, Doc! <laughs> What in the world are you doing? Well, hello, Doc. Well, what are you digging there? A set of graves? Graves? Oh, my goodness. Doc, don't talk like that. This here is a garden. A what? A garden. It looks more like a buffalo wallow. Does Matt know that you're doing this right outside of his back door? Well, no, he don't. I'm kindly surprising him. Besides, I ain't hurting nothing, Doc. Just spading up the dirt, son. Well, I can see that. Look, let me show you how my garden's going to be. Uh, now, see, right here is where the beans are going. Uh, and here is the carrot. And yonder's the peas. Uh, right there. I don't see anything. Well, they ain't planted yet, but I got everything ready. All I need now is a seed. Now, where did this garden idea come from? You. Yeah. Uh, what do you... Me? Well, sure. Don't you remember that time you were talking, Mr. Dillon, about how people eat out here on the frontier and how they might get scullery? Yeah, uh, scullery? Yeah, from not eating enough greens and sour. Oh, stuff and yeah. All. Oh, that, that scurvy, Chester, not scullery. No. Well, whatever it is, I got to thinking on it and decided to do something about it so I don't get that disease, I mean. Oh, I, oh well, that's fine, yes. But as I remember it, that talk we had was months ago. That's right, it was. And I've been worrying about it ever since. Oh, you're a man of action. And the trouble is, I'm broke. Plum. I can't buy no seed. Well, see, well, let me... Oh, no, 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 now, don't look at me. Well, now, Doc, you'd like a plate of greens every now and then, wouldn't you? Well, sure I would, but not enough to pay for the seed. You might get scullery, that's Doc. A scurvy, Chester, and I won't get it. Wouldn't take very much buy them seed from Mr. Jonas. Just a few pennies is all, Doc, and then none of us wouldn't never have to worry again. Well, now, Chester, now, uh, suppose you did get those seeds. Now, you think everything that you plant is going to bloom like a sunflower? Well, my gracious, Doc, this ain't no problem. You just kindly push them little old seed into the ground, and before you know it, you got vegetables. Oh, yeah, oh, my, you're quite a farmer. All right, now, Doc, ain't no need to smart off. All right, all right, Chester. All right, here, uh, here's some money. Uh, there, now. Go and get your seat. Well, thank you, Doc. And from now on, you're half owner of this garden. You can have part of whatever I grow free. Oh, well, that's good of you, Chester. <sighs> it's pretty warm, ain't it? It usually is in the sun. Must be near noon. Yeah, let me see. It's just about quarter to twelve. Quarter till twelve. My gracious, I'm going to be late. Late? Where are you going? Or to meet Mr. Dillon at Del Monaco. Lunch or... What about our garden? I'll get to it, Doc. But after all, if Dodge ain't had no green vegetables for all this time, it ain't gonna hurt us none to wait a little longer. I don't mind a man making money, Mr. Dillon, but by Jing, I don't think he should be making it all off of me. Oh, what do you mean, Chester? Why, that Zach Holden charging 15 cents for a meal like that. I swear that steak still had a piece of the hide on it. Oh, prices are going up, Chester. You just got to face it. But it's getting so the man don't hardly have nothing left after feeding himself a little, and that's a fact. Look yonder, Mr. Dillon. There's a lady going into the office. Uh-huh. Reckon what she wants. Well, if she's like most women, we won't be long in finding out. Uh, you wanted to see me, ma'am? You... You're the marshal? Yes, and that's right, Matt Dillon. Uh, this is Chester Proudfoot. How do you do, ma'am? How do you do? Uh, I'm Cora Meadows, marshal. My boy and I live out west of town, a piece. No? Oh, well, won't you sit down, Miss Meadows? Thank you. Uh, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, what, Chester? As long as you and Miss Meadows is going to be talking for a spell, I believe I'll just go on back and see Zach Holden about charging that outlandish price for a meal. It's still sticking in my craw. All right, Chester, you do that. Excuse me, ma'am. Now, Miss Meadows. Um, Marshal, I, I don't rightly know what to do. Well, suppose you just tell me what's the matter. Well, that's just it, Marshal. I'm sure of what'll happen if I tell you, and I... I'm afraid of what'll happen if I don't. You need help? Yes, Marshal. I, I need help, all right. Uh-huh. Uh, just speak right out. Well, it, it's my boy. 
My boy, Tad, he's missing. Oh. I, I think he's taken out after that man, and he'll kill the boy if he sees him, and he'll kill me if he knows I've been here. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, what man are you talking about? The one that shot that fellow out to my place yesterday. He shot him down just like he was an animal. Now, you're telling me there was a killing there yesterday and that your son may have gone after the murderer? Yes, Marshal, I am. Well, I think you better go back to the beginning and tell me the whole story. Drug from, Mr. Dillon? Yeah, at the kitchen door, Chester. The track should be along here somewhere. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, over here, Chester. Uh, see there? Looks like heel marks. Yeah. Leading over in them bushes. Yeah, they sure do. Come on. I don't think he'd have taken much time with him. Oh. Uh, yeah. There he is. Seems to me you could have took the trouble to bury him. Well, when a man shoots you in the back, he's not going to worry about your funeral, Chester. I've seen him before, Mr. Dillon. He was at the Long Branch a lot, playing cards. Yeah, it's a gambler by the name of Rourke. Well, I guess the burying's up to us. Yes, sir. Well, I came as soon as I got your message, Doc. Is there something wrong? Yes, Matt, there is. Come to the other room. Oh? Huh? It's this youngster, Matt. I found him by the road. Oh, what's the matter with him? He's been beaten. Cruelly, brutally beaten. Look. I could bring him out of it for a while there. Did he say who he is? No, and that's a funny thing, Matt. He hasn't talked at all. He's been conscious most of the day, but he, he won't say a word. Huh. Yeah, I guess you can blame him. Whoever did this was trying to scare him to death, even if it didn't quite kill him. Uh, is it okay if I try to talk to him? Oh, yes, it won't hurt him, if he'll talk. Do you know who he is? Yeah, I think so. Hello, Tad. Tad? Uh, Tad, I'm Marshal Dillon. <laughs> now, you, you don't have to turn your head away, Tad. I, I want to help you. I want to help you and help your mother. <laughs> now, you want me to catch the man who did this, don't you? I can do it if you'll help me. Look... Tad, I, I promise you won't get hurt anymore, and I promise that your mother won't get hurt either. Tad, look, the only way to be sure that you're safe is to bring this man in. I'm not going to answer that. No, I guess not. All right, Doc, let's leave him alone. How long are you going to keep him here, Jack? Oh, I expect he'll be up by tomorrow if he's quiet. The boy recovers mighty fast. Mm -hmm. uh, would he be well enough to stay in town with uh, Kitty for a few days? Oh, well, sure, Matt, I guess so. But if you know who he is, why don't you take him home? Well, I'll tell you later, Doc. But uh, there are a couple of people I want to see first. <laughs> Uh, hello, 
Sam. Oh, Marshal, get you a drink? Uh, no, thanks, Sam. Is Kitty around? Yeah, she's upstairs, Marshal. Ought to be down in a minute or two. Oh, well, I'll go on up. Thanks. Sure. Oh, Mark, you looking for me? Oh, yeah, I'd like to talk to you, Kitty. I'm coming down. All right. Come on over to a table. We can sit down. Oh, no, no, thanks, Kitty. I haven't got time. I... I want to ask you to do a favor for me. Well, sure, ma'am. What is it? I want you to take care of a small boy for me for a couple of days. A boy? Uh, what is he, a runaway? No, not exactly, but uh, I'd like to have you keep him around the Long Branch for a day or two and give him the run of the place. It doesn't sound exactly like the best surroundings for a young boy, Matt. Well, you're going to have to trust my judgment, Kitty. Will you do it for me? Well, well, sure. I, I guess so, if you want me to. I do want you to. I'll explain later. Yeah. Thanks, Kitty. Oh, sure, Matt. Dylan, I'd like to talk to you, Miss Meadows. Come in, Marshal. Tad, is it about Tad? Yes, it is, ma'am. I, uh, I'm pretty sure we found him. Well, where is he? Is he all right? Uh, he's at Doc Adams' office. Doc? Uh, he's all right now, Miss Meadows, but uh, well, he, he's had a bad beating. Beating? I think the killer beat him to keep him quiet. And it worked because Tad won't talk to anybody. I'll go get him, Marshal. I'll fetch him home. Well, that's what I want to talk to you about, Miss Meadows. I'd like to keep the boy in town for a few days. No, a, a sick boy belongs in his own home. I'll go get him right now. Now, would you listen to me for a minute, Miss Meadows? You've got to understand that as long as this man is on the loose, neither you or Tad is going to be safe. Well, we're, we're not going to get mixed up in that no more, Marshal. Me and Tad will stay right out here and never say a word more. Yeah, but if the killer gets worried about you, it won't matter where you are, especially if he knows that you've been to see me. I shouldn't have come. No, you did right to come, Miss Meadows. And if you'll let me keep Tad in town for a few days, maybe we can get this man. Now, I, I'm pretty sure that he's a gambler, and he'll be back. You mean you want Tad to help you? Well, he won't know anything about it, ma'am. He'll be perfectly safe, I promise oh, you. Oh, no, Marshal. You've got no right I'm to I'm not talking it. about rights, ma'am. I'm talking about... I'm talking about maybe saving your life and your boy's life, too. I want him here at home. Now, you, you just let him recognize that gunman for us, and he'll be home, safe and for good. He's been hurt bad enough already. He won't already. be hurt, ma'am. Now, Chester or I will be watching him every minute, and as soon as it's over, I'll bring him right home. Tad's a, a good boy. He never had a beating before. And I want to see that he doesn't ever have another one. <laughs> Tad, there's one thing about playing poker that you might as well learn right off. It ain't so much what you've got in your hand as what folks think you've got. Can you understand that? I think so, Mr. Proudfoot. Well, some folks just has a face for it, and that's a fact. Now, you know, lots of folks calls me poker because nobody don't never know what I got in my hand. Um, give me one card, please. All right. Now, don't you let on what you've got. Yes, sir. Now, that's good. That is good. You ain't letting on one bit. Now, I'll take one myself. Ha! Ah. Oh! Well, I'll... Well, well, what's the matter? Ah, a thing like this wouldn't happen in six months of Sundays. But I thought you weren't supposed to let on. Yeah, you ain't. You ain't, but you take a hand like this, a six and a seven and a nine and a ten, and then you haul off and draw an eight and... A minor uh, all blue. Uh, you get me hungry, Chester? Yeah, yeah, no, I, I can last it out on this kid till Mr. Dunn comes back. Oh, well, he ought to be here pretty soon. He went out to see your mother, Tad. He wanted her to know that you've been doing just fine these last few days. Oh, yes, sir. I hope she's fine, too. 
I sure like to go home. Hello, yeah. Kitty. Uh, uh, hello, Matt. Hey, Mr. Dillon, you know what I just did? How's Ma? Oh, she's fine, Tad. She said to tell you not to worry about anything, and uh, she sent you some clean clothes. Did she say when I could come home? That ought to be soon. Why don't you take those clothes on up to the room, honey? Uh, yes, sir. And when you come down, we'll have Sam bring you some supper. Oh, thank you, Miss Kitty. Uh, Mr. Dillon, do you know what happened just a minute ago? No. I, I was drawn to an inside straight. and the... Marshall! Marshall! What? Hey, what is it, boy? There he is! Kitty, that's our man. Take the boy upstairs, You're will sure, you? sure, Matt. Come on, honey. Come on. It's all a commotion, Marshal. And men walk in here for a drink. We, uh, been waiting for you, mister. The boy and I. Well, I don't know what you're talking about. I, I never saw that boy before in my life. You never expected to see him again, either. At least not alive. After that beating you gave him. Be. Now, you listen, Marshal. You listen to me. Uh, that boy knows you. And so does his mother. Well, she, she ain't here. She'll be way. here in good time. Marshal, you ain't taking me. You better look out, mister. Because I'm not turning my back on you like Rourke did. Oh, you... <laughs> Got him, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. Well, anybody can shoot a man, Chester. It's that boy's mother, what she did, that took real courage. Well, come on, let's take Tad home. I think his mother's waited long enough. written for Gunsmoke by Marion Clark, with editorial supervision by John Meston.